Good morning. I want to begin our time today by reading from Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. And after this I looked, and there was before me a great multitude, and no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. It is great to be with you again today. As your district superintendent, let me just say how much I appreciate every church leader, every congregation who's joined together in this initiative for 21 days of prayer. You may have already heard this, but 2022 will be a year of focus prayer here in the district. We're joining together every second Sunday of the month in a church somewhere across our district for prayer at 6 p.m. And we'll be sharing that schedule, so stay tuned at our team updates. Well, this morning marks our final video devotional for these 21 days of prayer. And as we're moving through our prayer time, I want us to think about and reflect on these verses from Revelation chapter 7. Let me begin by admitting there's so many things in the book of Revelation I do not understand. The Apostle John was given a glimpse of the future, and he tried the best of his ability to explain it to us, but it's hard to comprehend. Beasts and dragons, plagues and violent destruction. It feels like a Lord of the Rings movie scene. It's too easy to focus on the things we don't understand in Revelation. But I want to focus our attention today on a scene that's so incredibly motivating. John catches this amazing vision of the throne room of God. And as far as he can see in every direction from every tribe and nation, John sees people praising God together. When we look at the world in which we live, we see people everywhere divided into tribes. We see people caught in clashes of culture or separated by skin tones. We see people drawing lines of division and people picking sides and calling names. But what does God see? He sees only one dividing line, those who are already his children, and those who he is still longing to embrace. There is only one race before God, the human race, and we all have the most important thing in common. We need a savior. Thank God Jesus Christ is our savior, and he's not willing that any should perish, but that all, all, capital A-L-L, -L, should come to repentance. In the Great Commission of Matthew 28, Jesus directs his followers to make disciples of every nation, every ethnos or people group. In Acts 1 8, Jesus promises Holy Spirit power to be witnessed in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. No one's left out. The good news of God's grace in Christ Jesus is that though we may be many tribes and nations, we are all invited to join in one great family with one great Father. What a beautiful picture of God's all-encompassing salvation that whosoever will may come. No degree of melanin is excluded. No shade of, of color of eyes or skin is excluded. No DNA pool is excluded. No national origin of birth or citizenship is excluded from his family. Yes, this is his glorious kingdom. No longer Jew or Gentile, no longer slave or free, no longer male or female, as Paul says in Galatians. What matters here in Revelation 7 is have you washed your robes in the one blood, the blood of the Lamb? And have your sins been forgiven and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ? John would write to those early Christians and say, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship, unity with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. The writer of the Hebrews reminds us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. But Jesus Christ died once and for all. You know, you've never looked in the eyes of a single person for whom Christ did not shed his precious blood. Today, as a district family, we have both cause to celebrate and room to grow. I'm grateful for the nationalities and ethnic groups that comprise our district family. We have dozens of nationalities and at least four language groups. We have Canadian pastors and Caribbean pastors. We have uh, pastors from Myanmar and pastors from Mexico and pastors from Indiana. Four language groups and dozens of nationalities, but one father, a father who's not willing that any should be lost. I'm thankful the Wesleyan Church ministers in 99 different nations around the world, and I've been blessed to 
minister in some of those fields myself. But our district has long-term partnerships in Mozambique and Bangladesh, and we have missionaries from our district and more than a dozen more of those fields. The good news is God is still calling and sending workers to the harvest field. There are more than three billion people who do not have ready access to the Bible or to a Christian church. But today as we begin to pray, let's remind ourselves that the mission field is not just over there somewhere. Fort Wayne Public School System, the state's largest public school district, serves families speaking more than 70 languages. While many of us must go to the ends of the earth, may God open our eyes to see that he's also bringing the mission field here to us. Only a united church in the love of Christ can reach a divided world blighted by our, our enemy. May God forgive us that Sunday morning is still the most segregated hour of the week in Indiana. We can do better. We must do better. And as we pray together, pray for unity in the spirit across the dividing lines of language and skin tones. Pray for love that honors each other above ourselves. Pray that even now that we may get a foretest foretaste of that blessed community that gathers in the throne room of heaven, crying out in unison, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Let us together with men and women of every tribe and tongue join in with the angels to proclaim, amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever, amen. Let's pray that his kingdom will come and that his will will be done even here even now on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray you would unite us in your family and you would unite us in your mission and that, Lord, you would be glorified as we link arms together in the harvest field, the mission field here in the Crossroads District. Thank you for these precious people who love you. Thank you for these pastors who lead their churches on this mission. And we pray, oh God, that we would meet with you in a special way in this time of prayer. We ask that in Jesus' name, amen.